Hi, Blood Talk fans. Previously, we have talked about what, why, and pre-analytical of urine analysis. Well, today we are getting to the fun part. We will be focusing on the physical parts of the urine analysis. The routine urine analysis include physical characteristic examinations of the urine, such as color, turbidity, odor, and specific gravity. Stick around and you will learn some interesting property of your urine. Without further ado, let us get into it. Everyone has a different normal color of urine, but it should fall on the yellow spectrum. The color of your urine is mostly determined by how much water you drink. If you drink a lot of water, your urine should appear clear or pale yellow. If you are dehydrated, your urine could appear dark yellow or amber. Beside the amount of water you drink, food that you consume also influences the color of your urine. There are a wide range of urine colors, and I will not name them all. I will point out the most commonly seen. Here are some of the common colors of urine that you may have seen before. Pale yellow or clear means healthy and well hydrated. Bright yellow means excess of B vitamin. You know if you are taking a B vitamin supplement because of the bright color urine, almost like a highlighter yellow. Red color urine could mean many things. I understand that it is alarming when seeing red urine because it could mean bleeding somewhere in the urinary tract. The bleeding can come from anywhere from kidney to urethra. However, red urine can also come from contaminations. An example is contamination with menstrual blood. This is why it is important to be careful during the collection process as well as choosing the right method to obtain the specimen. Some medications can also cause urine to be red. Another reason that your urine could be red or has shades of red color is if you are eating a lot of beetroot or blackberries. Orange could mean a few different things as well. Orange urine could have significant medical conditions like hyperbilirubinemia. This means that the blood bilirubin level is elevated so that the kidney has to filter out more bilirubin from the blood. Therefore, higher concentrations of the bilirubin in the urine, which give urine orange color. Orange urine is often found in patients with liver disease and hemolysis. Some medications can also give urine orange color as well. Your food consumption can make urine orange if you consume an excess amount of vitamin A or vitamin B complex. Or a lot of orange color food like carrots, your urine can have orange color. Brown and black. Brown and black urine is not common, but it can be alarming when it happens. Because brown and black color urine can come from any cause of red or orange urine, but in a more severe condition. Urine that contains red cells and heme pigments can range from pink to black because it is also influenced by the pH and the contact time between pigment and urine. For instance, acid urine, which contain hemoglobin, will darken as the contact time increase due to the formations of methemoglobin. This contact time includes the time urine inside the body waiting to be collected and when the specimen is already collected. You see, another reason why specimens should be sent to the laboratory as soon as possible for the most accurate test results. It is scary to see brown or black urines but it doesn't always mean bad news because there are medications that can cause urine to turn brown and black. However, if you see this, please contact your doctor immediately. Green. Green urine is not very common, but can be found in patients with urinary tract infection secondary to pseudomonas infection. Like most other urine colors, patient medications and food consumptions play a role here as well. Clearity or turbidity test. 
normal urine is clear but can be cloudy due to medical condition like UTI or precipitate crystal in urine, which we will be talking about it in microscopic of the urine analysis. But we'll touch base on it a little bit here. First, amorphous phosphate in alkali urine. Amorphous phosphates are white precipitate, which will dissolve when acid is added. Second, amorphous urea in an acid urine. Amorphous urea usually have pink color, which can be confused with red blood cells. But amorphous urea will dissolve if the specimen is heated. Third, the urine can also appear cloudy if leukocyte or white blood cells, epithelial cells, and bacteria are present. All these subspecies can confirm during microscopic examinations of the urine sediment, which we will be talking about it in the following video. Form and order. Form and order are not routinely reported as a part of urine analysis, but when CLS notice any significant, we'll make a note about it. Formy urine suggests that the urine has protein presence, which can be confirmed with the chemical part of urine analysis. Order. Your urine order can tell a bit about your health as well. Did you surprise? I was when I first learned about it. Here are some examples of what I'm talking about. For example, if your urine smells sweet or fruity, it suggests that urine has ketones present. If your urine smells very pungent, it may contain bacteria. And here is a few more examples. Specific gravity. The specific gravity is the ratio of weight of a volume of urine to the weight of the same volume of distal water at a constant temperature. This was a mouthful, wasn't it? This was a definition given to me when I was in my class. Let me try to explain it another way. The specific gravity is a test that compares the density of the urine to the density of distal water at the same temperature. Distal water is purified water without any minerals, while urine has other substrate that our kidney filter out beside water. The normal range of specific gravity of urine is 1.003 to 1.035. Water specific gravity is 1. There are some conditions that would change the specific gravity of a urine and terminology that CLS should know because it does show up on exams. Hypostyuria. Hypostyuria is used to describe a urine with a consistently low specific gravity. Hypostyuria is a concentration problem, so the urine is consistently diluted. This condition can be found in patients with diabetes insipidus. The patient with diabetes insipidus, the urine specific gravity is really low because in this disease, there is a deficiency or resistance of ADH. Hypothyuria is used to describe a urine with consistently high specific gravity. This could indicate dehydration or medical conditions like diabetes mellitus. In diabetes mellitus, this is a deficiency of insulin and excess of glucose. Glucose molecules are very dense and therefore the urine will have a very high specific gravity. Isothyuria refers to a fixed specific gravity of 1.010, which indicate poor tubular reabsorptions. Patient in this condition will have urine specific gravity around 1.010, regardless if they are dehydrated or well hydrated. This condition coincide with advanced kidney failure because the kidney lost the ability to concentrate urine. Thank you for staying with me until the end. What do you want to know next? Do you want to know more about blood bank, chemistry, microbiology? If you have any burning questions, please feel free to leave me a comment down below. Lastly, if you have not done so, please like, share, subscribe, and click the notification bell. 
I will see you in the next episode of Blood Talks. And as always, remember, your blood tells you the story of your health. Thanks for watching. Bye.